the last couple of things I want to do is probably just introduce you now to the way, to show you the way that we do it. That caution, though, as I said, Rome wasn't built in a day. We've been doing this for a good number of years. Uh, our systems have evolved over time. So just take that with a grain of salt and start heading in the right direction. We use uh, Asana, that's our project management tool, and then we also use System Hub. So let's have a look at both System Hub and then also Asana and how they work together. And then what you want to do is think about how this is going to apply for your business. The takeaways of what I'm keen for you to get by going through this exercise is to just give you a, a frame of reference of, of what it can look like once it's built out. So you just start to put the big rocks into place, you start to stitch things together, you kind of know the direction that you're headed and the way that you might structure things and think about the tools that you're using at the moment. And have I mentioned something, oh, that seems like a more efficient way to do that particular task. So have a look at the SOP management side of things. So firstly, you want to be able to store your systems in different departments and folders. So let's say underneath recruitment here, you know, there's a series of systems around running job ads and looking at trial tasks and reviewing CVs. So I'll just click on one of these to give you a bit of a look. So this is a system for the way that we would run a job ad and, and get them to fill out a questionnaire. So we have a, a Asana template that gets duplicated. We have some team member roles and responsibilities. Uh, so we pick the job description. We get them to fill out a Google form. So rather than getting people to send in CVs, we get people, we, we'll run a job ad, let's say, on Seek or something like that. We'll have a Google form where we get them to fill out uh, a 20-minute questionnaire because we know if someone isn't going to fill out a 20-minute questionnaire, they're probably not the right person for us anyway. Um, and I don't want to waste my staff's time by having them spending hours looking through CVs. So we, we get them to fill out a questionnaire first. We then do like a pre-scan of, is this someone that meets our minimum criteria? A team member would then outreach to uh, the person and say, great, we'd love to move you to the next stage. We'd love to give you a trial task. So that's what goes on here. A trial task would be invite shortlisted candidates. They get added to a spreadsheet. Uh, we send them a trial task. You know, here's an email template for that. So just down here, great, you've been shortlisted and you know, would you like to take part in a trial task? Then we send them a little task associated to their role. Because again, if they're not gonna do a 20 minute task, then they're probably not the right fit. We, if you imagine this funnel, we get a good number of people that come in at the top of the funnel, the people that fill out the questionnaire, each stage goes down filtering more. So people drop out at the trial task phase. People drop out when we then ask for their CV and cover letter. Then people will drop out when they get through to the interview process. And then usually we're, we're putting you know, one or two people on that we'll trial to see if they're a good fit and then we'll offer them a position. So that's here. If we think in terms of like you know, sales operations, like I've got a couple of different divisions to the business. So we put you know, email templates and things like that would live in, in here. Uh, we also have operations. So let me show you, so Melbourne Video Production, and I'll show you, I showed you an overview. We have the project management side of things, but then we also have the video production side of things. So this is the overview system for the videographer that I showed you. And we'll just have a look here. This would then link through to different steps. Now this tool here is mainly used as induction teaching them. When it actually comes to them doing the task, and I'll show you the way it works in Asana, what we're actually doing is we're not really sharing the overview system. Their project manager would assign a specific step to them, like you're about to do this discovery call. And then it, we would link to the system relevant to that discovery call. So the overview system more gives them an idea of how everything strings together. But in real life application, they're just getting assigned tasks. But then you compare that with something like the project management system. So this is the overall process for a video shoot. So Gillian manages this side of our business. So there's a little bit of an overview. The overview systems are usually a little bit more complex, but you know, the sales team would get an inquiry and then they do a handover email through to accounts. And then accounts sees that and then they set up the Asana project. And then they send out their you know, email templates, no doubt there's probably something here. Yeah, we, we get a deposit, send out the expectation. So this is an overview of 
this, so it's quite lengthy, but you'll see here then there's email templates. So the salesperson would have sent this. They say, hey, great to get you started. I'm going to connect you with Sally in accounts. We're going to confirm that you're getting a video. Um, here's your company details. We take payment up front, 50% uh, and then 50% on completion. We'd CC in accounts. Sally would spot this and then she knows that's the trigger for her, for her step, which is great. Further to salesperson's email, we'll take the 50% deposit up front. Um, you'll get an invoice via zero and you know, go check out this expectations page which, which helps to outline what to expect, the video production process. We can even have a little bit of a look at that. There's a video here that, I, that gets sent to the clients on the way that we work for videos. What to expect from your video. There's a little video here. We talk about pre-production, production and post-production and what they need to do. So that's the way that it would work in here. Then let's say accounts. So let's say Sally uh, needs to invoice someone. So we've got invoicing. You know, here's the overall process for invoicing someone. So they send over the accounts email, they review and set up the client, they add the new inventory item, they update in Asana, and then once the magic actually happens now, once it then gets passed back into Asana. So the, the first couple of steps seem to happen outside of that, but in System Hub, the way that you'd create a system, you know, you can just create folders. So you just say, um, what do we do for Harry? Harry was, I think he called it BDM. So we just go BDM. So let's imagine that BDM was a department. So then we'd create the system here, create system. So uh, we were qualifying leads. Just create that. And then what I would do is I'd take that video that we recorded earlier. So I would have exported that video out. I would have saved it into Dropbox or uploaded it to YouTube as a private video. So let's just grab that video. Let's assume that I had done that. And we'll grab this video. We'll come back here. Scroll down here. I would attach the video, add. And let's assume that was me doing it. I'd come down the bottom here and then I'd just say, hey, Christian, uh, here's my documenter. He's more than my documenter. He's my systems champion. He's watching this video right now. Hey, Christian, thank you for all the good work that you do. Um, so we'll uh, just tag him in here and say, please watch this video and follow the system for creating systems. And then my, my task is now done here. I can assign primary and secondary owners. I can also assign it through to different roles. So uh, then if I come, the last thing I'll show you in here, and then we'll actually see the way that it works inside Asana and the way the two work together. So you've got roles. So roles can be roles or departments. So depending on the size of your organisation, you might do it as a role or more of a department. But then you can assign systems to roles. And then when you create team members, and I've got my little dummy account down here, I've got um, admin access here. So I'm going to edit this team member and we're going to add some roles or, you know, I, this is set to reader access and I only want them to see things related to the video production so I'm going to just save that. We'll come back. Now, I'm an admin, so I get extra special rights. I can log in as Dave Test. And you'll notice now a lot of the systems when Dave Test logs in would be restricted. So if I go into accounts here, now there's only one system in here. How, how that person can um, log expenses and approve logins. Because I've, I've, I've come in now as someone who only has reader access. And if you're working with uh, external contractors as well, uh, you don't necessarily need to invite them into System Hub. So let's say this is, you know, create a new expense claim in zero. Let's say I'm working with a contractor and Michael over there is doing the video for us, um, you know, has a, an expense for parking today downstairs in Phoenix and he wants to submit that along with his invoice. Sally can say to him, Let's share, grab the external share link, and then just grab that link, and then that is the system. You can notice there it's an unguessable, unindexable string there for the system. And a good way we talked about doing this with Dave at Portavac is he's like, oh, some, some people are not very technological, like they're, they're not using apps, and they're, you know, they're on their phone a little bit, but they're more on there for social media. And I said, well, if there's an issue and they can't you know, unblock the hose or whatever, 
generate, the, they, they can call up head office, generate an external share link, and then just text it through to them. So that way they don't even have to worry about logging in and you're kind of review, reducing a lot of that friction for them. Or they can log in if, if they want to do that. But that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of the way the system side of things should be handled. Now we'll com combine that with a project management tool. Okay, so the way that this looks from a project management point of view, again, it doesn't matter what tool that you're using as long as it, it solves this particular problem of who does what by when. So I'm going to come down here and let's say tasks to duplicate. So this area here is all of the different products and services that we sell in the digital agency. And these are all master templates. So let's say someone bought a website from us. The first thing that would happen, the salesperson does the handover email uh, to Sally in accounts. Sally then, that triggers Sally to know, great, my time to do my bit. She sends out the invoice and the expectations email. Part of her step is then to set it up inside Asana. So she jumps inside Asana, duplicates this particular project, and then assigns it through to the project manager. So here is a website build. That would then get duplicated for the client. That would then get assigned to a project manager, Melissa or you know, Jillian, if, if it was video or whatever. And then they would oversee it to make sure that the project moves and that it, the subtasks get assigned out to the individual team members. So here, now we're looking, this would link to the overall system at the top level here. But we scroll down here, you know, there are some other steps in here, like let's say accounts invoicing the balance. Melissa assigned this to Sally and says, great, we're good for you to do this particular step. She'd come in here, she'd say, all right, Sally, I want you to do that. Let's make today's date ready to go because, you know, we're ready for delivery. Uh, then come in here, th this would now appear for Sally. Depending on Sally's rights, she may see the whole project or she might just see just her task appear in her inbox. And then if she didn't know how to do it, so or maybe Sally was on leave and then it got assigned to Gillian and Gillian was like, I haven't invoiced someone in months, I've got no idea how to do it. She might then click on the invoicing system, which would then take them back to System Hub, which then shows them how to do it. So this is how you create something that now works without me. Like someone else takes responsibility for the project, that's getting assigned out at the individual level. Um, the milestones, the delivery of those steps is what gets assigned in the project management tool and then the how-to is captured uh, inside System Hub.